Hello and welcome to another video on Inkscape. In this video I'm going to be taking a look at how we can wrap text around a shape that's not symmetrical and still be able to flip our text from the inside of the path to the outside of the path and vice versa. Stick with us. So if you've seen my video on wrapping text around a circle and how we can curve text, you'll be familiar with the put on path function. So if we just as a quick demonstration, hold down control, drag out a circle, we write some text, and then we can hold down our shift, sorry, let's get our selection tool, we can hold down our shift, select the circle, select the text, we can come up to text, and we can use the put on path function to put it onto the path. Now with it on the path, we can click onto our circle, double click it, and we can rotate our circle, which has the effect of rotating the text around the outside. We can flip the text to the inside by flipping the actual circle itself. But the question is, why does the text move to the inside when we flip the circle? Well, the answer is that we're actually reversing the direction of the nodes. There is another way we can do this, but for this way to work, we need this circle, which is at the moment a circle shape. We need it to be converted to a path. So I'm gonna come up to path and I'm going to come down to object to path that has the effect of changing our circle uh, into a path in its own right so now we've got these four nodes around our circle so now the other way we can do it to flip our writing we can reverse the direction of the nodes by coming up to path and down to reverse and that has the same effect so now we're reversing the direction of the nodes just by using our reverse function so now we know about that we'll lose that bit let's get rid of that so we move down to our our illustration of a cat down here we put some text around this cat so the first thing I need to do is create a path that goes around the outside of this cat this cat is a vector graphic so what I'm going to do is select him and he's grouped together so first thing I'm going to do is press ctrl D to duplicate the cat I'm then going to come up to the ungroup button at the top here click it a few times to make sure it's completely ungrouped we can then come over to path down to union which makes it a solid shape. I'm gonna hold down shift and give our new path a red stroke. And I'm going to come down and just click on the X to get rid of the fill color. So now we've got this red path going around the outside of our cat. We just need to offset this line a little bit now. I'm gonna press control and close bracket a few times just to offset our path a little bit. So when we put writing on, it sits away from the cat. You might not be able to see on your screen, but down here, I've got a little dot, which is part of the path where there's a, a hole in here. It's created uh, this um, compound path out of these two, two sections. So the main path and this little one in here. We can get rid of this by coming up to path, down to break apart, and then path, union once I found it there it is and that will remove any little compound sections that we've got inside holes and things now we've just got this nice neat path around the outside what I do want to do is kind of take out some of these corners and lumps and bumps a simple way of doing this is to simplify our path so if you come up to path we can come down to simplify what this does is just remove nodes so it has the effect of smoothing the stroke and we've got a shortcut here control L so if we click on it, it smooths the stroke a certain amount, but we want to do it a little bit more. So this time we're just going to press Control L and we can do this till we're happy with the smoothness of the stroke. I think that'd be good enough. So the next thing I need to do is write some text. So I want to grab my text tool. I'm going to, with uh, my cap lock on, I'm just going to put I love. And then a second lot of text, I'm going to put my cat. I'm going to hold down Shift. I'm going to get my selection tool, hold down shift, select both of these. I'm going to use um, my text dialog box. So I'll click on the T at the top here, and then we can just come down and select whichever font we want. I've got one in mind that I've imported, which is sometime later. If you want to learn about how you can import fonts for use in Inkscape and other aspects of working with text, click on the link in the top right hand corner and I'll attach a playlist. So now I've got the font that I want, I'm going to apply it to my writing, like so. So this path I want to use a second time to put my cat at the bottom. So I'm going to press Ctrl D to duplicate it. I'm going to change the colour by holding down Shift and selecting the colour I want for my stroke. 
I'm then just going to offset it a bit. So I'm going to press Control and close bracket just to move it off so we can distinguish between the two of them. So the first thing I want to do is put my I love on the red path. So select the red path, hold down Shift, select the I love, come up to text and then you can press on put on path. So this has put the text on the inside. We want it on the outside. So we need to reverse the direction of our nodes. So if we come up to path, we can come down to reverse and that has the effect of flipping it to the outside of our path. So when we put text on a path, it starts at the, the start node of our path. So where our writing is starting um, at this point, it's, it's likely to get in the way as we you know, play with our writing and get it to sit how we want it to. We're likely to cross over this point. And this is a problem. So if I just put my cursor at the front, I'm going to add a load of spaces in here just so we can move our text around the outside of our path. And I just want to show you why this can be a problem. So this can be a problem because as we get to the end of our path, our letters will start to disappear off the end. And we're likely to want our E to be in this vicinity. So I'm going to remedy this problem by cutting our path into two halves. So first thing I'll do is take the writing off the path. We can do this by coming up to text, remove from path. We've got an awful lot of blank spaces in front there. So we'll select those and delete them. Let's get the selection tool. We'll just move that out of the way. So I want to split our path now into two halves or two sections. So if we get our rectangle tool, we can drag a rectangle over the section of the path that we want. So we can go our selection tool. We can then hold down shift, select our red path, and then we can come up to path, cut path. And that's sliced our path now into two sections. So if we click off, we can select this top section of the path that we want. We can hold down shift, select our writing, and then we can come back up to text, put on path. And now we can just get our text tool, stick our cursor in there. I'll just move back to the start. And then we can just add a few spaces to get it roughly positioned right. We want our writing to be considerably bigger. So what I'm going to do is just select this text. Hold on, let's select it all. And then we can increase the size of our text. And let's try it up at, what's 48 do? Perhaps a little bit bigger, 56. Yeah, I quite like that, that'll do me, I think. So then we can start arranging how we want it. So if we click at the start, go back, try and get it centralized. We need a little bit of extra space between the O and the V so we can get a bit of clarity there. So if I just select the O, we can add some spacing in there. I'm perhaps then going to select the V and I'm just going to rotate the V slightly so we can come up to the top here to our rotation box and we can just add a bit of rotation just to stand that V up a little bit. And I select the I, I'm just going to use our horizontal kerning just to move it back a touch. So I'm also going to select this E and I'm just going to rotate it slightly so it so it sits nicely on our above our cat. Let's change that to five. How's that? So the next thing we want to do is put my cat on the blue path. So to do this, we can come back to our selection tool, select the blue path. Hold down shift, select my cat, and then we can come up to text and down to put on path. So the text is on the inside of the path, which is where we want it. We just need to move it round now. So if we come in, grab our um, text tool, we can put our cursor in front of the text. And now if we add some spaces, we can move our, our text around the curve so we got it roughly where we want it. We need to change the size of our text as well. So if we select all of the text, we can come up, change this to 56, I think it was on that. So we change that to 56. Then we can try and centralize it a little bit more. Now, we want this writing to just be touching this red path. So it's sitting the same distance away from our cat as the writing on the top. So we need to offset our blue line a little bit. Now. To do this, I'm going to use a slightly different method. I'm going to select the blue path. I'm going to come up to path and I'm going to come down to dynamic offset. What this does is give us a little diamond handle just here. 
And if we pull on that, we can offset it dynamically and see exactly what we're doing. So we want our text just to sit against the red path here. So if you move that up, we can see it's just sitting against it. So now we can come back to our text tool. We can put our cursor back in and then we can add a few more spaces to get our writing where we want it. Again, oh, I think that's one too many. Again, we can do the fine adjustment with our controls at the top here. So I think in between we need a bit more space, don't we? That looks a bit better. And I think the text in general, where our text is on the inside of the curve, it does have the effect of bunching our text up to, together a little bit. So all I'm going to do here is space our text out. So I'm going to use the first one here to add a bit of space between our letters. So let's change that to 0.5, perhaps a little bit more. Perhaps make it 1, perhaps 2. Might even make it 3. So that's looking a little bit better, I think, space-wise. does need a little bit of work. That T needs rotating out, but what I'm going to do is just move it back a little bit. So a backspace to get it back where I want it. And then we can do individual adjustment. So on the cat here, I'm going to increase it a bit more, the spacing, till we're happy with it. I'm going to rotate that T a little bit. I think that T will look nicer if it's... And I'm just going to use the horizontal kerning to move it back towards the A a little bit there. So I think I'm quite happy with the writing now. Um, now all we need to do is cover up or hide our paths. So the easiest way to do this, we could either convert our writing into paths in their own right, but it stops you being able to come in and edit it. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to hide the two paths. Now, nice way of doing that is if we come into objects, come down to objects, which will open up our objects dialog box. And in here, we've got our paths. So we can just come in and we can just turn off the visibility of our paths. And then I get rid of all of them. So that's how you can wrap text around a, a non-symmetrical shape and still better flip your writing inside and outside of your path using the reverse function. If you want to learn more about how to work with text and what you can do with it, click on the link in the top right hand corner and I'll attach a playlist. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.